On this episode of NSFW Show, we are joined by both Len Peralta and fantasy author legend Patrick Rothfuss. We ruin Patrick's career. <laughs> we make Lens better? Question mark? It's all coming up on this edition of NSFW to show. Also charity? Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for NSFW is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E. F-L-Y dot com. This is NSFW episode 214, recorded on January 21st, 2014. Think about the children. This episode of NSFW is brought to you by Ting.com. Ting is a mobile phone service that makes sense. Save money with Ting. Pay only for what you use. Ting doesn't require a contract and offers unlimited devices on one shared plan. To save 25 bucks off your first Ting device, Visit nsfw.ting.com. That's nsfw.ting.com. And Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off your new account, go to squarespace.com and use offer code NSFW1. And ProXPN. ProXPN is a virtual private network that allows you to use the internet the way it should be, anonymous and without oversight. For 20% off your new account, go to proxpn.com slash twit and use the code NSFW. Hit me, I'm open! That means it is go time for NSFW, the new show full of wind, the new sauce for the webinets, the show that is nominally safe for work. Oh my goodness, all my favorite people all in one place. Hello, beautiful folks. My name is Brian Brushwood at Twits Austin Ancillary Location. Joining us from Oakland, California, is the other half of my left nut. It's Mr. Justin Robert Young. What's going on, buddy? I like how metaphorically we're both your left nut. <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. Well, you're the other half of my left nut. Yeah, and so together we make one half of your sack. <laughs> yes. Well, well, uh, you, you, the contents Tech of the sack. Tech news you love from people you trust. <laughs> I, I trust one I trust nut. My nut. Well, and it's also, I guess, I guess, really like uh, the internet itself is sort of the self-contained wrapping that makes all of this possible, right? Does yeah. that work? Well, I'll tell you what. I'm glad that we're only one nut, because that way we have plenty of sack for a couple of other ones. <laughs> yep. We're going three balls today. Me and Brian are sharing one, and there are two more to go. The first of which, you know him from the Geek A Week. He is a friend of this show. And guess what? He's got a Kickstarter. What? <laughs> Peralta. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. How you doing, everybody? Len Peralta, thank you so much for joining us again, man. Always good to see you. Uh, so, uh, all right, let's get the business out of the way. Uh, you you are doing a Kickstarter for what is it again? Uh, for Geek Week Year 5-2, which you, uh, Brian, and you, Justin, are both in. You are going to be cards. Now, so, yeah, um, explain, explain Geek Week for anybody who does not know. Oh, ab- absolutely. Uh, Geek Week is a... Uh, uh, project, uh, multimedia, I like to call it a multimedia art project, where I uh, connect with different geeks uh, through interviews. Uh, I do podcasts with them, uh, interview, uh, interview them, and then I draw them as trading cards. And then those trading cards uh, end up in real space. Uh, so uh, th- I'm getting ready to do my fifth season. I have 16 days left to go on the Kickstarter. I got a big goal on this one because it's a it's a year full of content. It's a full year, uh, and uh, and uh, I am I'm looking for help from the chat realm. Hopefully they can give me a nice shot in the arm here. So, yeah. Uh, well, well now let, let all right. So so there's a bunch of stuff and a lot of people who have participated in the uh the the geek week that will be drawn as play or trading cards for you have yes. kicked in little extra bonuses uh one of which was the gregory brothers singing and answering machine message which i think was uh only five were available i don't know how many are available now there's but I know one more four. left of those what was that there's only one more left of those yeah because it went to four immediately because i bought in on, <laughs> on, on our own like kickstarter thing that we're a part of i'm like nope like, Dibs. Brothers singing on my answering machine is mine. That's yeah. awesome. 
Uh, so, but we are, we are no different, Brian. We are kicking in our own reward level. Uh, we will do, and I don't know what, what, what the buy-in is, but, uh, we it's will do a night attack style track on the topic um, of your choosing. Yeah. But one word, that's all you get is, is, is a word or a sentence or something. We'll decide that later, but, uh, you just get the starting point and we'll start there and then go wherever else. Yeah. And uh, uh, I'll tell you what else. Here's what I'm curious, because you always come up with like a theme for everything. And I assume this is what the interview is really about, is to find out what they're into, to, you know, to get an inspiration for the design. Because here you got like the double click says FBI agents. Um, like, uh, like, do you come in with preconceived notions of what you're going to do or you just let that evolve organically out of the conversation? I, I do let it evolve. I try not to go in with any sort of um, ideas because I think that kind of I just want to hear what they have to say. Uh, and, uh, and I, you know, I've, I've tried to do the best I can as, as meeting the expectations of the people I talk to. Um, for example, there's a card on that little image you just showed of, um, kick-ass writer, um, Mark Millar. Right. Uh, and, uh, I drew him as his character, uh, superior, uh, but he wanted me to draw him in the style of Mobius, the French cartoon, uh, comic book artist. And oh, so, wow. Uh, so I, I did that. It's it's, I, I, uh, it's a little bit of a hard to see that on the on the image there, um, but uh, but yeah, I drew him as Mo, him as Mobius, and it's uh, it's pretty kick ass. <laughs> That's awesome. So okay, uh, so- it looks it looks fantastic. And I, I mean, like you you've had the Giga. How many Giga Week runs have you done before this one? Uh, this is I've done four before, but this is the first time I'm doing a total fifty a another fifty two card set. Yeah. This no, is God. so. Wait, so, so, what did you do before? You would do like a run of twenty or so, or yeah, it'd be like it'd be uh, fifteen or so cards, and uh, and, and they would be they'd be smaller. Uh, I did one that was all video game geeks, so I got to talk to and draw Gabe Newell, uh, Cliff Blazinski, uh, folks from you know Notch. I got to talk to Tim Schaefer, uh, folks from the video game world, uh, and uh, and I did two other sets where I got to talk to George R. R. Martin. I got to talk to uh, the the cast of the Big Bang Theory, so this one is really cool. There's there's a lot of really excellent people, and I, this gives me a chance to to put people in the set that I've wanted to put in for a real long time, like like you guys and and uh, and like Scott Johnson and and uh, and uh, Brian Ibbett, uh and just a ton of other people that I've been wanting to draw for a real long time, but I just either didn't have the time or didn't have the room in the set. Like you always have to move people around and stuff like that. So this is an opportunity to do just that so uh well one of the things that you do oftentimes when you show up on like tech news today or or other programs is you'll actually draw live uh what's going on you did it on frame weight rate frame weight frame weight hold on <laughs> i did it on frame weight wait for the frame okay now uh and uh you did it on frame rate on our 100th episode and uh, uh we talked about doing something like this tonight but as luck would have it justin we got a random uh a tweet i started tweeting with uh, with an old pal of ours and we had an idea of uh, what we could do that would use len and our other guests do we want to tease that now or we want to thank a sponsor first uh go ahead and tease it and then i'm going to tell you about our lovely sponsor as i pull it up <laughs> it's the delightful code for i need to pull up the sponsor read uh all right so here's what we're gonna do uh we have uh, i started swapping tweets with uh, pat rothfuss the other day uh, uh of course he who wrote uh, name of the wind and the king killer Krill, king whatever i can't talk today uh <laughs> did i mention i'm high as a kite right now gentlemen because i uh, let's let's get into that how oh, high geez. are you no okay and so, should you be drinking beer uh, probably not uh the uh <laughs> uh okay so first of all I, I had the legitimate disease uh with that shingles chicken pox thing but then the day i got i got over that like on the 10th was when i'm like today i am healthy on January 11th, if you type in, or I'm going to go to news.google.com, there was a record-breaking, uh, let's see, we'll do Cedar, Cedar Fever Austin in the news. Uh, and let's see this right here. Take a look at this. So I normally don't react to pollen. It's not bad for me. But this is this is the day I got sit well was on January 10th and the day January 11th hits the highest cedar pollen count like in recorded history in Austin. And pretty much since then, it's been nothing but like decongestants and, and everything. I, it was awful. Like like when I went to go see uh, Archer live, uh, I, I they asked me to handle a mic and I was like, I can't I can't talk in a mic. I, I just need to like I can't physically talk because I can't breathe. So it's been like, and the worst part is like sleeping. You wake up and there's just a, there's, I can't decide which is worth, like worse. You wake up 
and there's just a river of snot pouring out your nose as your mouth breathing, or the realization that you, you don't care because at least you're able to sleep and you just sort of like let the river continue to trickle and just roll right over and go to sleep. It's awful. So anyway, that's what I'm, that's what I'm doing. Well, that's great, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know what's even better? Ting. <laughs> Ting. Tell me about Ting while I try to get Pat Rothfuss on the line. Ting's what happened when you wake up and you start hacking because the cedar fever has driven you to the point where you can't breathe. Uh, no, just kidding, folks. Ting is the no BS mobile service that will allow you to unshackle yourself from the absolute kingdom of horse crap that is major telecoms. An MVNO reseller of the nationwide Sprint network. Uh, yeah, man. I no hear that contracts or ETFs. People... What do you think ETF stands for? Exchange traded funds, right? It's not. It's early termination fees. Ting yeah. came up with the ETF relief program. If you're paying an ETF, you come to Ting, they got your back. Probably your front, too. Ting's going to give you credit for 25% off your ETF, up to $75 per device. Simply purchase your device through Ting, port your number, then submit your final bill with your ETF detailed from your previous carrier. Go to ting.com slash ETF for more information. And here's the deal. You they got know your how back. Yeah. You want to know how Ting works? First, purchase your mobile device from Ting. You'll receive in two to five business days, or you can bring over your favorite Sprint phone like the iPhone 4 or 4S. Check out the full list of eligible phones by going to the special URL and clicking on the BYOD link at the top of the page. That special That's URL? That's nsfw.ting.com. Yeah. Absolutely. Ting will help you turn your old device into cash to help you move on to Ting. After you activate your device, you have the option to select a new phone number or port the existing one. Head on over to nsfw.ting.com and when you sign up and you get your first Ting device, you're gonna save $25 on that. And you're gonna support this here show, nsfw.ting.com, that is nsfw.ting.com. <laughs> Seems legit, bro. Uh, all right, I'm trying to get uh, people added. I'm gonna have to, I don't know, maybe I'll call them on the phone here. Um, but here's what we're going to do. Explain what we want to do with Pat. Um, where we're kind of, we're worried for, I mean, let's be honest, Brian, we, we, we've been talking about this a lot. We're worried about Pat and his career. Uh, well, yes, it's clearly he's having difficulties. He's, uh, I mean, by difficulties, you know, it's, it's just his challenge is that right now, if I say Pat Rothfuss, you're thinking of one series of book. You're thinking the, of the King Killer Chronicles and yeah. you're thinking of the name of the wind, by the way. We have, I mean, yeah. Oh, go ahead, I Justin. And by the way, what does he want to be? Like that one-trick pony George R. R. Martin? That's all anybody thinks of is the one thing he does. Yeah, right? right? That's where I'm Diversify. At. That's what the name of the game is, right? That's why we have Pat Rothfuss on the line nice. with us right now. Pat, how you doing, buddy? Pretty good. Awesome. Thanks for joining us. Look, we're, we're here to save your career, bud. We know, we, <laughs> we, we know things are tough. We're worried. With... You're a friend. Yeah, you 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 need to have more franchises associated with your name. So we're gonna we're gonna brainstorm. We got a, an amazing mind share here. We're gonna come up with your next big series. Well, okay. and, and listen, by the way, uh, we're going to create tonight in the next fifteen minutes the great unwritten Patrick Rothfuss novel. You don't even have to write it. I've already got a great unwritten novel. You know, <laughs> the unwritten part is the easy bit. Exactly. Then you already have practice. <laughs> <laughs> this exactly. is going to be super simple. All we got to do is come up with an awesome cover that Len Peralta, one of the greatest artists here, and, and now I like that you're like looking up Brady Bunch style <laughs> so you can see him uh, uh, above you. Uh, oh, he's going to draw the cover. And there we go. All right, so uh, let's, the, let's start. A uh, great unwritten Patrick Rothfuss novel here. And this way, and people can ask you about it, and, when, and you can just be like, I, I, I prefer not to talk about it. <laughs> and now it's like a mystery. <laughs> Uh, we'd like to point out for those of you who don't remember last time we had him on we, we gave him this gold uh -oh. <laughs> so <laughs> we, we just need to make sure that we hit the uh, we hit at least that level of quality maybe even better who knows uh, uh all right so before we get started let, let's 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 sketch out like like what what are off limits uh, are, you, are you exclusively fantasy or would you go techno horror or vampire I, I we we could go we could I, I'm not opposed to urban fantasy if if there was some some so we, vampire so we I draw have, the line at, at sparkle though you so, know everyone right. has a limit 
Well, here, let me let me just pitch you this. Every book series, right? They always it's like a, a novel in a series, but it's always multiple words. It's always like a sentence. Like a novel in the sword next to the riverbed that sits beneath the castle series or whatever, right? <laughs> okay. One word. A novel in the, we just need the one word series that just describes the whole thing, right? Oh. And it could just be like a feeling, like right. aggression. A, a, a feeling like, like butthurt, right? The butthurt chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. This is great. Uh, I, I mean, you know what? I was going to play a whole, like, in the round. We, you want to throw some more words out, or we're going to go straight for butthurt? I was, listen, it's, that, it's, that, that's a good first draft. Let's keep going. See, let, <laughs> let's, now, th this, is, this is two words, but I feel like you could have the Crimson Angst saga. Ooh. Crimson uh, Angst. Um, Crimson Angst is def definitely epic fantasy, I think. Uh, uh, how about this, though? Brian, one word, cranks. <laughs> Crankst? <laughs> Crankst is cyberpunk. There we go. What about the uh, the uh, the? Now this is going to sound like two words. It's only one, and it's and it's inspired by your title. What about crunk dragons? Like that's just like that's a whole uh, party crew of dragons. Like I, I'm seeing, and or maybe it's a metaphor. I don't know. We can go in I, different ways. I think crunk dragons would be like a double billing with My Little Pony. Uh, that's that's obviously <laughs> like a children's property. They're crunk dragons. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's good. Uh, we're seeing in the chat room here, uh, Sunbum says puppy dogs. Where are we at on puppy dogs? One word. Uh, I'll tell you what, you don't have to answer that because Web1824 suggests the Brown Star Chronicles. I don't know if that does anything for you. <laughs> it, it All right, let, let's go ahead and elevate stupid. it from the gutter, folks. All right. Uh, the Vamp Ponies. <laughs> Actually, oh, well, I can't believe that nobody has done the van ponies yet. That that's your million dollar idea right there. Cranking money, cranking <laughs> money all day. Keep the machine going. Now, now, is that is that in your wheelhouse, Pat? You think you can nail the van pony manuscripts? That's uh, oh, so you, that that's just that the vamp vamp pony is still like an animated series. I think I I uh, you know it could be an illustrated. Like YA thing. That might, oh, all right. That might all right. Here we go. My... Wait. I got it. What do you got? Uh and and I have to give full credit to Backstage Oyster. I'm gonna I'm gonna pitch <laughs> the story, the basic story, right? All right? We want urban fantasy. Let's say living amongst us is a realm. We don't have to say vampires. It could be kind of a slight variant, but maybe we're we're in that vein, right? Of just kind of superhuman, immortal sort of people, right? And as it turns out, when they have children, they are of super strength, and it is a part of their culture that much like in like ancient Sparta, only the strongest children can continue on and live forever. It's the only time that this race is vulnerable. So the kids are trained in combat and they fight at like age six months, right? <laughs> they fight them to the and they, death. And they can handle it because, you know, they're, 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 they come from a realm where usually, you know, they, they don't, they, there is no tabula rasa in this other realm. You are built a, a warrior. You just got to let that warrior yep. out as fast Absolutely. as you can. And they, they become defenders of, of the family and, and, and of the entire tribe. And here we go, Patrick Rothfuss and of course his famous unwritten novel, Baby Fighter Chronicle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the, the horrible thing is, is you work a kitten in there somehow, and I think that is, like, that's everything that... that... Oh! The main character has a talking kitten sidekick! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, can, can, can he talk at his age, or, or at six months, or is he just sort of like a baby who just screams and cries and <laughs> kicks ass? In fact, that could be the title. Screams, Cries, Kicks Ass. Oh, the first novel, Children. Children. <laughs> the Children Chronicles. There you go. Man. Oh. Uh, all right. Well, here, as as Len is drawing and uh, and, and Patrick is uh, contemplating why he indeed came on this show, <laughs> let's talk about why. Uh, you have a big thing uh, that we are we are raising money for, right? Well, I thought I thought I was just having an intervention here. That's right. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, right now we are uh, creeping up on the end of a yearly fundraiser that I do called World Builders, uh, where we kind of rally different parts of the geek community. Um, and we encourage people to donate uh, on our team page to Heifer International. And if people do, they have the chance to win like just a ton of amazing, cool stuff. We've got like literally tens of thousands of dollars worth of books, like signed books, rare books, um, limited edition stuff, stuff that's out of print, stuff that you can't get anymore. Um, I think our current total is somewhere around like $50,000 worth. Um, and we have not put everything up yet. We're still showing off some of the, the cooler prizes. So if you go in, you donate, you're automatically added to that, to that thing and you, you could win something. But, uh, uh, Heifer International is where the money goes and it's making uh, people's lives better every day all over the world, including here in the U.S. Well, and, and keep in mind what I like about uh, uh, about uh, Team Heifer or Heifer International is that is that it, you're not just giving money that will be spent on goods. You're building infrastructure by its very nature. You're giving them the, the, the stuff that they need to to build ahead. And, and it's like this is this is uh, maybe in many ways one of the most exciting times in all of human history if for no other reason than you know we're watching uh, the so-called bottom billion the people who are living on less than a dollar's worth of, of, of food per day uh, raise up and up and up and it's you know if, if they have the infrastructure if they have the ability to raise their own goats and sheep and so on uh, then you know then we weirdly us in the west are looking at a, an emerging market to sell all our all, all our bs to so it's like yeah. we all, we're investing it's, uh, it's, uh, I, I, you know, I think, uh, John Green just did a video and it might've just been today talking about, you know, he started off saying, you know, this year or like last year, uh, 6 million children, uh, died, you know, and, uh, or I think like starved to death and he goes, but that's great. It has never been that low before in human history. I mean that that's one of the weird things is is it's very it's very popular to and very easy to say how you know the world's getting worse and look at how many wars there are so many people died and it is true you can look at one statistic that says you know the most number of people were ever killed in war in the 20th century but the least number of per people in a percentage in the history of man have been killed in war in the last 20 years you know it's and it's and it's because once there's enough once everyone's got food and vaccines and a connection to World of Warcraft, it, it becomes you you lose interest. <laughs> it, you lose interest in 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 shooting each other. I think it it does definitely take the edge off. You know, when you have a, a full belly and an internet connection, you know, you you really don't want to go you know wreck other people's uh, other people's stuff. The uh, uh, you know there's a great statistic. I, actually, I didn't dig it up. Um, I posted a blog where I. Uh, somebody, somebody said, so Pat, what is the deal with the charity thing? I just want to buy your books. I want to support you as an author. And I wrote a blog saying, you know, I really appreciate that. And it's great to be able to make a living as an author, but here's why I do charity. And in the comments, somebody said, here's what makes Heifer International awesome. And there was a quote where effectively Heifer had gone in and over the space of like five or six years, had spent uh, $7 million in this area and uh, to like build infrastructure and you educate people and you train them up and you give them materials. And now because of that, those people annually generate for themselves $8 million a year. Like every year, these people make for themselves $8 million and they have uh, like another $13 million of capital that they've produced. And so it's like we've built a huge machine that is constantly making their lives better. And it makes the lives of other people around them better because Heifer really centers on people 
educating each other after they themselves have been educated. I'm looking at that picture of that angry, angry <laughs> it's, it's baby. It's coming in. Hey guys, don't, don't spoil the bit. Don't spoil the bit. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, and I promise we'll go back to being funny here shortly, but what you're describing is is what uh, uh, the late economist Julian Simon described as, you know, humans being the most valuable resource, better than any uh, infrastructure, the ingenuity of humans, the ability to 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 uh, solve problems and make, make the pie bigger for everyone is far and away the most valuable uh, uh, resource out there um all right well here but man i kind of want to you know what i'm going to close the door on this let's let's real quick let's just burn through another sponsor here so we can give len a second here we can see our first draft on on the biggest thing ever oh, oh but before we do real quick pat uh, what's the website we want to point people to again um if you hit worldbuilders.org mm -hmm. um you will hit our website if you hit my blog that's pretty much all we're talking about on there for the next uh week and a half up until uh, February 2nd. Um, and we also run auctions. I will let me put in one quick plug there. Sure. Right now, if you are an aspiring author, um, we have had people come in from the community, like, like great authors, experienced authors, editors, agents, um, they're giving up their time to the charity. So you can go in there and they're auctioning off like read and critiques of your unpublished manuscripts. Um, even, even cooler, they're offering like reading critiques of like your submission packet. So if you're like me, I had a book that I really wanted to show people, but I sucked at writing a query letter. Um, and so I flailed uselessly for like two years cause I had no freaking idea how to write a query letter. These people will give you feedback on that. So you can go in and bid on those auctions. And these are like, these are great authors and great editors offering up their time um, so, and that those auctions are ending this Sunday. We're always running some auctions, uh, for That's the awesome. extra now, rare book and stuff and like listen, that. This, this is a no brainer. If you are, if you are a geek, this is like an absolute, you are, there is no other way to get this kind of, 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 of give back for what is an amazing cause that is great to donate to anyway. You guys are sweet, sweetening the pot on a charity that already does an amazing amount of just really not good work, important work, you know, important real life steps to making the world a better place. Yeah. And the, the great thing is like a ton, you know, this year we're, we're, we're probably going to hit, I, I'm really, we're gunning for half a million dollars and it's not wow. all coming from rich folks. It's coming, like, I think better than half of our donations come from people who are able to chip in, like, 20 or 30 bucks. Yeah. Like, 30 bucks changes somebody's life just forever, you know? And their kids are healthy, and their kids get to go to school, and those kids grow up, and their kids are better off, too. So it's like starting an avalanche of awesome into the future. Yeah, that whole virtuous cycle thing. Um, and so and you actually have gone over and visited some of these vis uh, villages, right? You know, I have uh, I've done some work with Heifer. Like I've gone to see what the work is. I was thinking about going over to Nepal. That was actually one of our stretch goals last year that me and, and Trey and uh, Veronica Belmont were all going to go over. Um, but we didn't hit that stretch goal. So we didn't actually go last year. Um, this year, and plus, you know, I, I just ended up so busy last year. Um, this year, we changed the direction of the stretch goals from like kind of big events, you know, to this year, it's like fun, goofy, you know, goofy stuff people doing. Neil Gaiman, if we had half a million, Neil Gaiman's doing a video where he reads Green Eggs and Ham. Um, oh, dude, that's awesome. We had the ladies from uh, Team Unicorn. They they just had a pie fight, which I, I had the stupidest laugh of my life over. They, they hit each other with pies. We've got people doing cool music. Paul and Storm mocked me viciously in, in, in uh, adapting their George Martin song to to me. Uh, <laughs> that's uh, awesome. So there's a ton of these cool stretch goals, too. And as we hit them, more fun things happen that you can, you know, chuckle at. So uh, we, we did get one question from the chat from uh, from the aptly named Luciferian, uh, who was asking <laughs> if it's a secular charity or not, because I guess the, the, that's that is the concern for a lot of people. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. They, they are not a missionary charity. They are absolutely not. They work with the communities. Um, and there is I hesitate to say something as as flaky sounding as there's a spiritual element, but 
they, they go and, and that sounds awful. I, I, I said that in the wrong way. But what they do in, is they go and they, they go in and work with the community, with the culture that is there so that what they're setting up works with the local culture in the same way that it works with the local ecology and the local environment um, so that it will last and work yeah. in, in that place. But right. no, they don't say, here's the sandwich if you pray to Jesus. There's right, none of that. right, right. No, I mean, uh, and, and, and I hope everybody understands that religion is something culturally very different in many other places of the world that it is not here, you know? <laughs> Here in in many, even in what we would consider deeply religious areas of our country, you can still get on Reddit and talk in like the R Atheist board and have friends in your high school that like you can make jokes about stuff like, you know, Richard Dawkins not getting through TSA because of a honey jar or something. You know, this is this is a, a different kind of world in different areas where te technologically it's not the same, uh, cultural uh, and government restrictions kind of put a lot of limitations on things. So a, a religious, a spiritual bent, having the spiritual flexibility to be able to go to the places that need the help the most is not a choice. It is a necessity if you want to do your job well. Yeah, it really is. All right, so uh, in our comedy show, we managed to uh, talk about warrior babies. We managed to mock <laughs> one of our favorite authors. We managed to immediately steer the conversation to starving children and religion. Brian, the only way that this can be more awkward is if I ham-fistedly shoved a commercial into here. Oh, well, thank which goodness. Is why That's why I not... want to bring up Squarespace. Whoa, whoa, because whoa. I'll just tell you what. It is the gold darn gold standard when it comes to this here website game. Justin, what would dri we were having a serious conversation. What would drive you to try to wedge a crass commercial message right in the middle of this? Because they are constantly improving their platform, and it's that kind of stick to itiveness that I do believe is worth commending here on the NSFW show. Okay, but 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 we're talking about saving children's lives, and and all new of a sudden features, new designs, and even better support. <laughs> It's also easy to use, inexpensive and mobile ready. Brian, even their code is beautiful. Mwah. Okay, but, but okay, we're talking about religion where it's like we're talking about the salvation of souls and you're talking about beautiful you codes? Talk about whatever you want on a Squarespace website, Brian. <laughs> you write the content. You create the layout. And I'll tell you what, you can approve comments and drag and drop photos on the go with their new mobile app. Okay, well, actually, that mobile app sounds pretty good. Just tell, real quick, just tell me a little bit about the mobile app. How about this? It's on your phone. <laughs> a deal. Hosting's <laughs> included. And how about if you're a little skeptical, don't worry. Start a free two-week trial with no credit card required and start building your website. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure you use the offer code NSFW1 to get 10% off and to show your support for NSFW. We'd like to thank Squarespace for their support of this show. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. We love you. And if we were a real person, we'd kiss you on the mouth. <laughs> is, that, is, that their new, is that their new official slogan? Uh, I just read the copy, Brian. Oh, man, that's, that, that is new. That's exciting. That's all I do. Uh, they gave me the copy, I read it. All right, speaking of copy, let's take a look at the, uh, at the preliminary cover <laughs> for... Uh, there we go. Close. There we go. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, it's Pat Rothfuss's Children, <laughs> book one of the Baby Fighter Chronicles. <laughs> oh, I can't show that to my girlfriend. She will. <laughs> she will hey, there we go. That could be the first blurb. <laughs> I can't show this to my girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, that's right in the corner here. That's actually a review. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> Here, what people are saying about Kildred, book one in the Baby Fighter Chronicles. I can't show this to my girlfriend, says author Patrick Rothfuss. <laughs> All right, so we've got... Man, oh. I, <laughs> I, I can't type. Yeah. <laughs> you, you are a wizard to do that. Oh. I, uh, anybody, anybody that can like do graphic art is just magical to me. And to be able to do it 
in that sort of time frame just kind of, <laughs> kind of well, freaks I, me out. In all I, Len, Len's the best in the game. There, there is no second uh, in in the contest of person who can draw like that in that in that time frame. He is uh, amazing at it. Man, I'll tell you what. Uh, this was. I think we originally were just talking about doing just one. Len, do you have do you have another one in you? Can we can we talk about what the sequel would look like? Uh, I might be able to do one. Yeah. <laughs> Patrick's like, listen, no, 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 no. I was here to plug the charity. I think I've defamed my my reputation. That's enough. fine. That's all right. If you have to, I mean, if you have to go, Pat, that's fine. But uh, it, it, I, I don't have to go. But it's like to, it, it, that's like you go up to Da Vinci and you're like, she's. <laughs> She's she's pretty, but you know, does she have a sister? You know, let's go for a two for here. Hey Pat, uh, would, you be, would you be open to making this a, a, a print at the at the Kickstarter that people could add on or purchase as a reward? Oh, oh my gosh, we we could if if uh, if. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think. How we this is, do by that. the way, ladies and gentlemen, what you're hearing is the sound of a desire to do good on a charity outweighed by the wants to uh, preserve one's reputation. <laughs> oh, I don't what, know how you much don't even have to do I it have. at your charity. You can do it at, at mine with the Kickstarter. <laughs> Mid Your, yours suggests, is too good to 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 uh, ruin with this. I don't mind putting this on mine. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Look, you guys can fight about it later. I just know that this is gold. Uh, Mitsula already has a name for the sequel, Children 2, The Terrible Twos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes! And that's it. That's when they go to the back dark side, right? They, 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 they get into a berserker rage, but they get stuck there. And so now they have to figure a way to contain the children because they're tearing <laughs> stuff up all over the place. Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, no. So now the adults have to deal with it, but they don't realize... That they've created a force that they can no longer control. God, this is so good. <laughs> In a world. <laughs> uh, hey, let's let's talk real quick because uh, it's been forever since we let's talked talk about real quick one. about Kildren Three up past <laughs> dead time. <laughs> up past dead time. Orison in the chat room with that one. <laughs> Um, I did want to, to talk to you because a lot, I mean, it's been over a year since we last chatted. Um, and, and I know, you know, of course, the question everyone asks you about the, the, the King Killer, when the next book is, you haven't had any more. I assume you're still hard at work at that and there's no announcements. There's, uh, well, actually, there's something kind of, there's the announcement of announcements to come. Um, because, you know, the, you know, book three, of course, is, is what people want. And honestly, book three is what I would love to give everyone but only like a perfect book three yeah. because like we don't want a matrix situation here. I yeah. mean, um, so, uh, you know, and so I'm, I'm obsessing on it and I'm, I'm making sure that it's as absolutely as good as I can make it. Um, and I was talking with my editor and I said, you know, Betsy, for NaNoWriMo a couple of years ago, I tried to write a short story and it turned into a novella. And then I tried to finish the novella and it turned into like something that was like 60,000 words long. And so I quit writing it because I knew I needed to get back to book three. I go, I could finish up that novel and we could publish it so people would have something to kind of bridge the gap. And it's still in the world. It's the story. It's the origin story of a new hero, which is kind of my thing that I, I like doing. And um, I go, you want to do that? And she's like, I think we could do that. So, you know, that is probably going to happen. Of course, we don't have a pub date yet. I, I'm still working on that that thing well, i'll tell you uh, what if, if if it's a choice between waiting you know two more years for the real book or getting getting something in that world to to make me happy in, in the next year or two the, yes I, I would much rather have that well and that's just the thing is like it's it's going to be a, a much it's going to be a short book for me which means it's going to be like <laughs> a real size book you know it'll yeah. be like a hundred hundred twenty thousand words um and you know i can I can finish that in a couple, two, three months, um, as opposed to book three, which is this huge, I've got to make sure that it fits in with what I've already done. It's so big and it's so complex. And I've got to keep an eye on the story for the future. It's just very slow going. Whereas this one's a standalone, you know? And so it's, it's something I can get in the pipe. Cause honestly, like as soon as the book is ready, 
you put it in the pipe and then production takes like a year and change. Yeah. Um, it's not something you can rush. It just doesn't work you, that way. Do you ever, cause you are a connected person. You, you are very active with people who want to get in touch with you. You're on Twitter. You know, you, you come on dumb shows like this and, and answer any question that we ask and deal with us defaming your, your, <laughs> your uh, reputation with these fake book covers. But like, <laughs> Did you ever get the the urge that you just write something and you just don't want you want to hit fast forward on on that pipeline that your pipeline just say you want to know what I'm going on my desktop to Amazon Direct Publishing and boom there we go I just want to get it out because I really like that interaction. You know, there's uh, there's that I kind of get my quick fix on the blog. Um, gotcha. you know, if I, if something kind of fun happens, I'll tell a little story. Cause that's like, all I can do is tell stories. And so I'll tell a story on the blog. I'll even do it on Facebook. I think I wrote like a little 500 word thing about something that happened today on Facebook. And I, I throw it out there. Um, some of the short fiction also has a, a much shorter gap. Um, I've got a novella, like about 20,000 words, that's coming out in an anthology, I think in September, um, where like I get to be anthology buddies with Neil Gaiman to say nothing of the fact that like George Martin is editing the anthology. Um, so like that's called Rogues and it's coming out, I, I'm pretty sure in September. Yeah, um, you can go so ahead and brush your shoulder off too. You, you have a little dirt on your shoulder. <laughs> 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 but uh so, you know so that that happens a little faster i also am working on a little story about ari um for those of you that have read the books you know ari's kind of a favorite character and i've just finished the draft of a of a novella with her it's it's a, like a really really long short story but it's too short to be a novel and we might publish that as a separate volume for people that are like really hungry for it. That means that can come out sooner. Maybe, maybe, honestly, I don't know if that story is crap or not yet. Um, it's, it's too fresh. It's, it's kind of a weird story too, because Ari is a, a different sort of character. So, uh, w when we were chatting on Twitter last night, uh, you were mentioning that, uh, that, uh, did you say that Twitter was new for you? Have you not been doing the Twitter thing? <laughs> no, I started in October. Um, uh, and we actually did a little bit of a contest. Um, I brought in uh, five friends and we all, I, I said, here, pretend to be me. Um, <laughs> oh, that's red. That always goes well. Actually, if you Google it up, you can see it's called like the real Rothfuss. Mm -hmm. um, we had all six profiles on one page. And, um, and, Everyone was guessing for two weeks. Everyone ran them. And then at the end of that, uh, everyone voted. And the winner, <clears throat> oh, yeah, they're, they're talking about the contest, but that's not it. Let me, let me dig it up here. Um, oh, wait, here we go. Whoa, you have a, you have a Snopes article on it. Uh, Patrick Rothfuss's Twitter game. Oh, here it is. Quote, here's what I've done. I created six Twitter accounts, all with versions of Pat Rothfuss, recruited five <laughs> members. Oh, that's great. Uh, starting today, they'll go, and so uh, people are out. Uh, that's awesome. Yeah. So and what? What was? I mean, like, were, were there any fears uh, when you did that, and was were any of them realized when you turned your identity over to uh, friends of yours? Uh no, no, I, I didn't, I didn't sweat that at all. I only brought in people that I trusted. Oh, here it is. It's called if you, if you. I wish I can't send you a link and I'm an idiot on Skype. Yeah, that's fine. Just tell me what to search for. It, it looks like the URL is Pat Twitter Tracker. Okay. Um, it's it's on Squarespace. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, and I I did not even intend that. That's right. That's but, why that's why that code looks how beautiful that code looks. The real Rothfuss right there. Yep. Okay, so this and, tracks all of them. Oh, that's great. And the thing is, uh, I didn't win this contest. I was in there, to, I was in it to win it. And See? I was duking it out and I got second place. Um, uh, Mary Robinette Kowal beat me 
uh, an author friend of mine, like, and didn't beat me by a little either. She beat me by a factor of three. She just destroyed this contract. So she did, see, she won by what? Just being clever? She was more Rothfuss. Like, well, well, I, I, more Rothfuss than me. I, I mean, I guess, I guess. The Kian way, Mas Rothfuss. <laughs> it, it, it seems like the way you would win would be so clever that people want to believe it's Rothfuss, even if it's not. They, they're hoping that it's you, less than deducing it's you. We talked about it on the blog uh, after the fact, and she talked about her strategies. Like she went in, you know, she writes, I mean, she's a Hugo Award winning short story writer. She writes this Regency fiction and she's, I mean, the, the thing she does with her language in her stories, you know, because she's writing in like the, you know, the, the 1800s she makes sure she doesn't use any words that weren't in use in the 1800s. And so when she was making twit twits, <laughs> making twits, Twice, yeah. um, when she was making a twit of me on this contest, if she was going to tweet something, she went and she searched my blog to see what sort of phrases I used. She was oh, so great. She, she got verified by Twitter. What? Oh, that's, For awesome. Just <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. That's like amazing. Eight, it took her 18 hours. She got verified by Twitter and and then it was like, yeah. you know, we <laughs> and then she like changed her username because that gets rid of your, you know, uh, of your verified status. And they kept re-verifying her. <laughs> and in the time since, it has not verified me. That's I'm gonna amazing. Have to, I have to pay her to come in and run my account for a couple of weeks so that Twitter will fucking verify yeah, it. Before the, uh, oh, hold on. I got, I got to do a little bit, a little bit of business right there. There we go. <laughs> All right. There's that. Um, it's, <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, that's it. Congratulations. Um, no, the, uh, uh, in fact, before like the belt wearer chronicles, before, <laughs> <laughs> before, uh, before I got verified, I always wanted to uh, – because most of the people who follow me would also follow Kevin Rose, especially when I first started, right? And what I wanted to do is because Twitter is one of the few things that you can change your actual Twitter handle and everything after the fact. Uh, the only problem is with – you know with as you mentioned, with the verified, you lose it now. But I, I never quite thought of what the right prank would be that wouldn't get me in trouble. But I wanted to – because, you know, again, like let's say at the time 30,000 people were following, they all follow uh, Kevin Rose – and if I change the name to, you know, Kevin Rose with a with a zero or an extra space at the end or something like that, and then use his exact Twitter avatar and then write something in there that just is retweeted like crazy. The one thing I was worried about was in the brief time that I changed my name away for I was worried somebody would add it. And I never, I never called that to get it. No, I can't be that. Absolutely nothing. somebody at Twitter that is a fan of your uh, a fan of your work knows that you were not on Twitter previously saw this really elegant uh, you know a tweet stream was unaware of this five imposter scheme that you were running uh, and was like well oh my god that's great my favorite author is on Twitter let me do him the solid of verifying him 
unknowingly, almost really in a fantasy novel kind of scenario where the the false prince is made king. Uh, you know, that, that you are now lying here in the gutter, vexed beyond all compre comprehension. The thing is, it didn't happen once either. She got verified three times throughout the contest. <laughs> so uh, awesome. <laughs> You That's know, amazing. And so yeah, she's she's got a, a mutant power or something. So do which, you do which one was she? She I've actually changed it. There's two of them you see with blue faces. Yeah. Up on up on that screen, she's on the upper rightmost one. Um, a faux Rothfuss. Uh, yeah, and actually, it, it, they all used to say Pat Rothfuss, but we changed them after the contest was over to <laughs> mitigate the confusion a little bit. Although everyone is still. Everyone adds me and goes, this, is this you? Are you are you the real <laughs> office? I'm like, yeah, I'm the real office. Yeah. yeah. So do, do you get out to do a lot of uh, fan events and, and, and actually get, you know, face-to-face -face with a lot of folks? Um, probably more than I should, uh, honestly. Um, uh, oh, speaking of which, I've had one just pop up uh, that I, I wasn't planning on doing uh, – Wootstock is doing a show out in San Francisco this weekend. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, Will Wheaton had a schedule conflict because it was going to be the founders of Wootstock. It was going to be Paul and Storm, Adam Savage, Will Wheaton. And so, and Will had a schedule conflict and Paul and Storm, I've done some stuff with them. They contacted me and say, said, so do you want to be our replacement? Will. So I'm coming out and I'm doing a show with them. So like geeky music and... Uh, and I will attempt to suck only just a tiny bit. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I can't be, I can't be as, as cool as will, but I will uh, be, uh, at least 80% as cool as I am. So well, do you have, do you have, is, is that Friday or Saturday? It's Sunday actually. Cause it's Sunday. part of a uh, sketch fest. Oh. Um, I'm doing, I'm doing that with them where it's really, that's, you know, that's Adam, that's Paul and storm. And I will be pretty much up there trying desperately not to shame myself on stage. Um, <laughs> always, like uh, you always set your goals high, you know, yeah, as long as yeah, I don't I'm, pee myself in front of strangers, <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to consider this one a success. I mean, we've, we've talked, we, we've talked to, uh, to a few folks who, um, uh, you know, who, who are authors, but you have a real presence. Like, do you have any kind of background in performing or anything? Oh, I uh, I was a teacher for a bunch of years, which helps. I did improv comedy back in the day. Um, you know, I, I'm certainly not afraid of the sound of my own voice. Um, I, I actually really enjoy uh, going up there and, and reading stuff. Um, I'll probably, um, if we've got the AV hookup for it, which they must at that big venue, uh, I'll probably do story time. We'll dim the lights and I'll read... Uh, the Adventures of the Princess and Mr. Whiffle to him, um, <laughs> which, you know, which is always a nice treat because nobody reads you picture books after you're, you know, eight or 10 years old. Awesome. Do, do you have any kids? I do. Um, they're, they're shackled in the other room, so they don't make noise right now. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, uh, I didn't shackle mine. And uh, my kids like trying to sleep in the next wall is being banged on like, shut up, dad. Stop interviewing Patrick Rothfuss. So of us have school tomorrow. Uh, well, listen, maybe you should educate them on the great unwritten Patrick Rothfuss novel, <laughs> The Baby Killer Chronicles. No, no, the, the, wait, children? Children of The Baby Killer Chronicles. That's right. <laughs> but you want to know what? I'll tell you. Uh, this is, this oh, all is reminding hey, me even of have, a very natural have... wait, hold uh, on. topic that I like to bring up uh, very often, which is uh, Pro XPN, Brian. Pro XPN? Man, that seems like a good way for, if Patrick Rothfuss never wants to be caught... Uh, out in public again on the internet, he could uh, he could hide where he's from and what he's up to by using Pro XPN because he's ashamed of children. Book one of the <laughs> here's what here's, uh, I'm not going to skip you all the technical mumbo jumbo. You can go on over to ProXPN.com. They're going to spell out everything for you in the nooks and crannies that will put your nerd heart to rest. I'm going to tell you this: privacy, my friends. In this age of public internet living, privacy is what you demand and what you need to survive. Don't let, a, you know, Obama gets up there and says, I'm the president. Don't worry, everything's going to be fine with the NSA. Don't leave it to him. Take matters into your own hands with ProXPN. Shield all of your internet traffic. Make sure that you can connect from any Wi-Fi 
be it at a filthy gas station, you are not <laughs> going to have your data spied on. Thanks to ProX. Well, I don't, it depends. Like, how what, what level of encryption are we talking about? Like two, three? The the best. <laughs> It's 512 bit encryption. Is what 512, you Brian. Okay. Just I said, like I said. <laughs> Here's the deal. You go on over to proxpn.com slash twit. Enter code NSFW, which by the way, little known fact, the name of this show. Wow. And you're gonna receive 20% off new accounts. No, 20% uh, off. I'm sure it's like a billion dollars. So you, now you only have to pay 800 million? Uh no. Brian, it's way less than that. Also, it's 20% off for the lifetime of your account. Whoa, if I live forever, I'm going to save a lot of money. Hell yeah, you are. <laughs> Go on over to proxpn.com slash twit and enter the promo code NSFW. 20% off the lifetime of your account. You're going to be running around with money bags in your hands and your friends are going to call you Scrooge McDuck. ProXPN. <laughs> Thanks, ProXPN. <laughs> we thank you for your support of NSFW. Man, you're just bowled over by the professionalism. I can tell, Pat. I'm, I'm thinking I've got to talk to my PR people <laughs> for when the book comes out because I like I want I want this magic. You, you want you want yeah, down see? On... people people love the ads. It's it's we, we got the magic. They love them. Three ads. People paid for this. This uh, three times over. <laughs> Put, uh, uh, buy an ad once, shame on you. Buy two ads, like seriously, you need to stop. Buy three ads, <laughs> we're laughing to the bank. Yeah, buy four ads, you deserve group therapy. <laughs> and you should start out every meeting with, hello, my name is Insert Company, and I've bought ads on NSFW show. <laughs> Hi, Insert Company. <laughs> and meanwhile, like, like mail routes up there, like, like, listen, man, you guys could be like us. You could get past this, your addiction to the ads on NSFW. You can let them behind. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll tell you what. Thank you very much, uh, Pat. Uh, let, let's get out to everybody where uh, they are going for the charity. Um, the best, easiest link to follow is World Builders. If you search on World Builders, you know, Google up World Builders, you'll get there. Worldbuilders.org is our website. From there, you can find the auctions. You can find the main donation page. <clears throat> you can find all the stretch goals showing people you know, being their goofy damn selves, um, you know, and uh, yeah, everything, everything is there. Uh, and remember, if you donate, uh, then you're automatically entered to win some cool swag. Uh, swag. We've got uh, games and books and all manner of stuff. Right on. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and let you drop off the line. Thanks for squeezing us in. Uh, I know it was very last minute and I, I'm thrilled that you guys are doing so well. You guys are all, what? 80 85 almost 90 percent to your to your total fundraising goal right now you know we we always end up with a big push at the very end we're uh uh we're we're close you were uh if we hit 433 we're gonna beat last year's total yep but honestly i we're we're at this point if people get in and give us 20 30 bucks uh, we're going to break half a million, and that'll be a, a huge landmark for us. Awesome. That's right. huge. That's well, I'll massive. make sure to do that Thank right you after. very, very much, Pat. All right, I'm going to hang Thank up you. on you now. We're going to hang out with Len Peralta. Boop, bye, Pat. Uh, man, that, that was awesome. He was such a good sport. Uh, with It is amazing <laughs> that like somebody who has the kind of acclaim and talent of Patrick Rothfuss, like, even deals with us. <laughs> he even tolerates <laughs> listening to us like the barking of dogs. Like, literally, I feel like there would be so many more authors of his stature that would listen to about five seconds of us being the braying loose mules that we are. <laughs> well, and especially and we're just with, loudly it's, sigh. It's, it's and not then just leave. it's not just that we uh like like we we crap out our turns and fling it against the wall and cackle that it looks like a butterfly. Then we like call over Len Peralta to like gild it and preserve <laughs> it for all eternity and make it like a, a trophy to hang on the wall. So let, let's stick with these mules, right? We are loose braying mules in an Italian village <laughs> okay. while, the, while all everybody else is dealing with us, just trying to conduct their business. Well, just runs over to like where there's a, a cage of minor birds and just kicks open the lock. <laughs> and now the minor birds just immortalizing our braying over and over and over again. <laughs> and forever. Well, like just as the sun comes up, you just hear the braying of these ridiculous mules. 
Uh, hey man, so uh, I'll tell you what, Len. I don't want to. I don't want to freak you out uh, here. Can you switch your camera? Oh, I can switch your camera back. I didn't know I could oh, there do you that. Go. Um, uh, uh, look to me like Pat didn't so much want to throw that on his Kickstarter. Right? On his, on his, <laughs> I'm just saying. So I'm just saying. Maybe maybe someone can have the great unwritten Pat Rothfuss book on their wall. <laughs> I mean, if, if if you're looking for something to throw on your Kickstarter, is what I'm I'll, saying. You know, I will. Uh, I will. I will clear it with Pat and see if he's okay with that. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to upset him in any well, way. I, right. I will say I, though that. Um, this uh, I would buy this book, <laughs> <laughs> the Baby Fighter Chronicles, Baby Killer Chronicles. No, it's Baby Fighter, right? Baby, baby Fighter, Baby Fighter, Baby Fighter Chronicles, yeah, Children. Children, the Baby Fighter Chronicles. That looks amazing. Listen, and Len, you're getting work now doing this for conferences and stuff, right? Yes, I am. I will be actually in Seattle in uh, in two weeks, drawing in front of a group of about 300 people. Uh, doing just exactly what we're doing. They will be presenting. I'll be drawing uh, whatever they're talking about, just live uh, for for people. It's called Convey UX. It's sold out, unfortunately. Um, but it'll be my first time at Seattle, and I'm looking forward to doing uh, doing the drawing in front of people. It'll be great. All right, so well, one man, more time. Uh, like, listen, your work is amazing. And uh, and where are you right now on, on the road to Kickstarter glory for well, Geek I, a Week 5-2? I, I, I am... About 16 days left, little over two weeks, halfway in. My goal for this week is actually to hit 20K. Uh, if I hit 20K, that'll be like halfway to the goal, 50% of the goal. And I think it's, uh, we'll see. I mean, it could be realistic to, to make it. We'll see. It's, I've got a long way to go, and I realize that. But I'm, uh, I'm fighting for every dollar that comes in. And uh, I'd love to do this project. I'd love to draw you and, uh, and, uh, and Brian and, uh, and Pat. Let's uh, let's ask the chat room listen, real quick. You've, like, what uh, what our card? Like I just I want to say this now so they could be thinking about it. But what should our card have Justin and I as? Because you've got you've got all these doing you know you've got Pendleton Ward eating fairies and you got you got yeah. the double clicks as agents like that. Like we're agents of about. Shield. Let, let yeah. me let me just tell you why, Len. You are you are brilliant. You're a brilliant man. You are very 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 smart because with this Kickstarter, you have tied the success of this project inextricably to the egos of 52 <laughs> different artists <laughs> more than 52 people. more than 52 yeah but like for this for this project right how many how many uh, artists do you have involved uh, right now i've got 44 people um i'm i'm I'm, I, I'm talking to some more people hopefully we'll we'll come through uh but 44 is the Consider is the magic number their egos to all be balloons and you <laughs> are ed asner in the chair you know like <laughs> You are you are in in the house, right? You are in the up house. All you need is just the egos of just like, oh no, wait, wait, we might not lift off the ground. <laughs> oh, <really? laughs> Woo! And then meanwhile, you are hanging out with some boy scout going on the adventure of a lifetime. <laughs> Uh man. Uh hey, uh Justin, I, I know we're about to theoretically we're supposed to wrap up with, with Len here, but do you do you have a uh, somebody kept hammering us on the uh on the dock asking us to uh do uh, a little Nigel and Simon on that uh that that uh Wang Chung song. I don't know if we want to try to throw that in there and see if that goes anywhere. Uh I think it'd be probably more of an after show thing. Yeah, well, all right, we'll we'll rock it in the after show. That's fine. Yeah. Um man, I guess is is there is there anything else? Do we actually get through anything? What do you got going on, Justin? Uh well, uh I don't know. This show. Oh gosh, we are such idiots. Oh, all my we've God. done. We is... are the worst idiots. I just remembered what we're supposed to like the number one thing. Oh. The thing that yesterday all we did was work we really had hard. What job? <laughs> <laughs> and we totally borked it. Hey guys. Uh, what if we told you that you could start getting Night Attack 3 tomorrow? Like, starting, like, right away. We brought up the fact that we do the Night Attack albums to plug the Kickstarter reward. We're like, hey, you know, we do these albums. So we're, we're recording now in piecemeal Night Attack 3. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, we have one of the tracks, and uh, we <laughs> look at this. They're all freaking out right now. <laughs> so We're so dumb. Here's what we decided to do. Um, we decided to. Uh, We're not going to give everything out tracks. Out. Yeah, as we record them, and some of them might make the album. Some of them might not. Like we really don't know. We don't know what our final mix is going to be. We haven't recorded everything, but. 
we want to just keep everybody. Because what happens is normally when we're like two weeks out from release, then we start plugging the uh, the 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 mailing list and start releasing tracks then. And that always feels a little like used car, like come on into the tent because we're going to ask you to buy something soon. Right. We just want to have the, the spread out relationship of just giving y'all free stuff off the Night Attack 3 album from the get. So we have what I consider might be the track that people would talk the most about on Night Attack 3 uh, available right now. Here's what you do. Bit.ly slash oh god i think it's not hold on wait i don't even want to say anything I should have... <laughs> uh, it's not, not attack three. this is we're great at our jobs this is what makes us great god we're, we're so good we're really good at, all right here uh, we go bit.ly slash night attack three that is uh capital n and a capital A, Night Attack 3. Oh. That will give you the RSS feed that will be available on iTunes and Stitcher in the rest of the week. So if you were listening to this on podcast, then it might already be there. Go ahead and check. Uh, on iTunes or whatever whatever or system. Stitcher. Yeah, just uh, look for for Night Attack 3 in the, uh, in the thing. Everybody's freaking out because it forwards to a Cheeto domain. That, that's not exactly our most uh, subtle... There, there you go. Cheeto.me slash It's an RSS feed. It's an XML feed. That's true. Cheeto helped me put it together. By the way, I hired Cheeto. <laughs> right on. Good on you, yeah. sir. Cheeto's on, on uh, he is he is uh, my, my podcasting Cato from here on out. So I'm going to record a lot more podcasts, and they're going to actually get out because Cheeto's going to help me actually do it. So I'm very, very excited. Well, and that's the thing, right? It's a, it's a question like, which would you rather have, like an increased fidelity of us getting ready to get ready to make everything right, or would you rather have it as soon as it's available every single time? And then, like, that's been our big problem with the Weird Things podcast is we, we're happy to do it regularly, but then it's like nobody wants to touch it once we're done. Yeah. No, it's going to be, uh, it, is, it is going to be very, very awesome. Uh, is Cheeto going to randomly attack you to keep you on your toes? Likely. Tell you what, that kid is a get it done kind of kid, and I'm very excited to be working with him. So, uh, night attack, uh, bit.ly slash night attack three. It is an XML feed, an RSS feed. Put it in your in an RSS reader right now. You're gonna get it. I know a lot of um, of podcasters, people who prefer to use uh, like Downcast. I think you can just put in RSS feeds, and it'll automatically rip the new stuff down. Go ahead and use that feed that you will get from that Bitly link. Uh, and then uh, it'll be on iTunes, it'll be on Stitcher. But we encourage everybody, subscribe to that. Subscribe, 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 subscribe. Yeah. And I guess with that, we're going to... Oh, gonna wait, do we want to give a, a, a real quick uh, teaser on oh. why people should subscribe, what that track is nope. about? Nope, nope, nope. It's too good. It's too good. You're just going to spoil it. Don't give it to them. It involves bladder acid. God damn it. I do. What part of don't tell them <laughs> uh, did you not... Again. This is just uh, okay, look. Love you guys. Best day of the week. Best time of the year. Best people on the internet. Dying to fire people. Just can't bear to be apart from Brian. See you next Tuesday. Of NSFW. Oh, I'd rather die in a fire <laughs> than to spend a single moment without Brian Brushwood. Oh, I'd rather be dipped in honey and fed to a big ant pile Than to do without Justin Robert Young for even a little while Oh, NSFW I love you Oh, NSF.